Hello, welcome to a new reading vlog, my friends. Starting off the vlog a little late this week because it's already Wednesday. I haven't had really a reason to update. My week hasn't been great so far. I've been dealing with some tooth pain. I finally called the dentist today, which I have to see a different dentist than I saw like two years ago or something because I don't have the same insurance. So that's just so much fun. My appointment's not for like nearly two weeks. Haven't done much reading so far this week, but last night I did start Court of Silver Flames. I'm never gonna get this title right because I'm so used to saying like, Akatar, Akamath, Akawar. But you can't do that, what is this? Echo, where's the middle between the silver and the flame? I can't say Echo, come on Sarah. Anyway, I'm like 60 pages into this. Also, I still can't get over how gorgeous this dust jacket is. Sorry like to be obnoxious, but oh my God. <laughs> Originally when this was announced, I wasn't entirely sure if I was gonna read it because this is like focused on Nesta and I did not like Nesta, but I heard a lot of great things about it. And obviously there's characters in here that I like, although it's been like forever since I've read the Akatar series and I started reading this and it kind of made me wish I had done a reread because she's like talking about things and I'm like, Huh? Then I was already reading this and I was like, I don't want to stop and do a reread because I'm already like kind of getting hooked into this. Sarah J. Bass still writing addicting books in 2021, who would have known? So I need to do like a recaptain's thing. Like I started reading one last night, but then I was like, I'm tired and just kept reading this instead. I just don't remember anything that happened in Akawar besides like that blowjob scene in the war camp because it was just so ridiculous. So I don't intend to like talk about spoilers when I read this and if I do it'll be like at the end and like I'll tell you. But I might say something that kind of spoils a bit of the Akatar series itself just because this is the fourth book. Fifth if you count the novella. But basically this picks up where the little novella left off and Nesta is just kind of, she's not having a good time. She's basically living on sex wine, spending all of Fair and Reese's money, like living in like a slumpy area. And so the book starts off with Cassian going to retrieve her and they go to Farah's house and they all sit down and basically like, this is your intervention, bitch. Time to get your shit together. And so yeah, it's gonna be about Nesta and Cassian. And so far from what I've read, I, I think I've like forgotten so much that my instant opinion on Nesta isn't like, ew, get off the page. <laughs> and like so far I don't I don't mind her. And I think it's gonna be interesting to see more into her mindset, which I, words I never thought I would say. All of this is going off of like the 60 pages that I read and was like pretty interested in. I was like, oh, I'm surprised that I'm so interested in this. Also very interesting is this is actually written in third person, whereas the Akatar series was in first person. So far that seems to be so that Sarah can like go back and forth between Cassian's perspective and Nesta's perspective, like in the same chapter. I hope it also means that maybe we get some recent Feyre action. Cause like we've seen them so far, but like it's my little something something, little something something. You know, I would love to read more about Lucian. Anyway, this is a really long-winded way to say that I started this book and I'm enjoying it so far. I also have a lot of movies to get watching because not this Sunday, but next Sunday is the Oscars. I've watched three of the like eight, I wanna say, Best Picture nominees so far. And every year I watch the Best Picture noms. I have been doing that for years now. And last night I watched The Trial of the Chicago 7, which was pretty good. Anyway, that's it. That's the update. Well, welcome to a new vlog. Okay, I'm only on page 129 of this book out of like 750, but I have a prediction, which is probably like an obvious one anyway, now that I think about it. But if you don't like wanna be spoiled, I mean, I'm not gonna like, I don't know if it's right or not, but if you don't wanna know anything about this book, then like, skip to whatever time I put on the screen. But the first time that we had Feyre and Reese like in a chapter, it was mentioned that Reese is like testing out this new power of his or like trying to strengthen this ability where he can put, I don't know, like a protective shield around something or someone and he's doing it with Feyre. Honestly, the magic in this world, I don't understand at all. But anyway, I didn't really think much of it the first time, but it was just mentioned for a second time. Cassian's like, why is Reese still got that ironclad shield on you? I'm calling it right now. It's because she's pregnant and he's like overprotective as fuck. Like no one's gonna hurt my, my woman and my child. One thing I realized I forgot to say earlier when I was talking about this book is that it might just be me forgetting the series, but so far this feels more 
like new adult than the other books. Like obviously they were categorized as YA. And then there was like a bunch of sexy stuff and we were like, huh? But the way this is written and like the casual, I don't know, like mentions, I guess, of sexual things just right off the bat and just the way they talk to each other and converse definitely feels more like more of your typical kind of new adult fantasy romance, which is truly what this series should have been all along, but I feel like this book is like leaning into it more than the others, at least from what my memory is. This clip brought to you by Cassian pointing out to Nesta that she's 25, and I was just like, she's, she's 25? Which makes sense, because I guess earlier they said Feyre is like 21, and Nesta was older. I feel like this is the closest I've read a character to my own age in a while because I'm 26. It's just, it's nice. I, we need more fun new adult fantasy like this. Hi friends. So I've been quite shit at like updating the vlog this week because it's already Friday and I just know I have like nothing. So I'm 200 pages into this. I'm enjoying it. I don't really have more of an update from what I've already said. I did get my March fairy loot box in yesterday, but I just did not feel like vlogging so I just I just opened it and so I thought I'd show you like what it was. The book is The Bright and the Pale which I've never heard of and apparently it's about like this like cursed mountain and this girl who survived it and now she has to go back to try to save someone and it's like Russian folklore or something. I don't know that was a really bad description. Don't know if I'll read it or not but like the pages. I don't know if you can see it, but they're like a shimmery blue and it's so pretty. And they really stuck to a blue theme with this box. Like you got this notebook, which is really cute and like useful because even though I haven't read the book that it's associated with, it's like still just pretty. It's based on winter songs. I don't know if anyone's read that. We got some wintry socks, this really pretty mug. I guess it's based on The Bear and the Nightingale, which I haven't read, but I'm definitely considering it just so that I have an excuse to keep and use this mug because very pretty. Then there's this headband that I guess is based on the Wicked Saint or whatever trilogy by Emily Duncan, who was exposed as a racist bully, so definitely not going to be using this. Don't really know what to do with it. Maybe someone will want it. If that's you, you know, let me know. No judgment. It sucks when an author like writes a book and you like it and then they turn out to be shit. The monthly tarot cards, also I believe based on Bear and the Nightingale. And this really pretty phone ring holder, it's Winterwood, I never read that. It just says be your own light and it's very pretty, but I'm a pop socket gal through and through, so I really don't have a use for this. I might ask my family if any of them want it, but if not, I might put it like on Depop or something, or if any of you want it, like honestly, like pay for shipping or whatever, I'll send it to you. <laughs> Cause it's really pretty and I don't want it to just like go to waste, so. Let me know. Okay, that's really the only update I have, but I need to clean my room cause it's messy. And so, you know, we gotta play our jams. Let's go babies. Nothing says spring, like having my book open with the baseball game on in the back. My new baseball blanket over here. Just a great spring April night. Except not entirely great because, um, hello? Ew. I was able to dismiss it at first, but there was at one point like earlier on here when they started talking about these weapons, about how like maybe if all three of them are brought together, they'll do something extra special or something be extra powerful, I don't know. But basically they're like, you know, how do we find these objects? And Nesta's like, I don't know how to find anything. And Abram says, light calls to like. You are made by the cauldron. You may track other objects made by it as well. And all I can think about is like shadow and bone and like, <laughs> the amplifiers and everything. Maybe it's just because I'm like in my shadow and bone shit still, but I'm just like, Sarah, you're not slick. Ugh, I love being right. And also I'm really glad Sarah J Mass didn't like try to keep this up for the whole book because like it was getting pretty damn obvious. Y'all, I look like such a mess right now because I just spent like two hours crying as I watched Nomadland. I think this vlog, I know, 
the footage has probably been like so random and like this vlog is not gonna be good i'm sorry but at this point it's basically just gonna be me reading the sarah j mass book and then watching oscar movies because i have like three more to go and a week before the Oscars. But let me set you down because I don't have the arm strength for that. Like I said, I just watched Nomadland and that movie fucked me up, y'all. It wasn't even that sad, but like I, oh my God, I was crying like 10 minutes in. It was so beautiful and like well shot and like, if you don't know what the movie is about, it's about this woman, her husband just died and the town where they lived was basically put in a situation where everyone that lived there had to leave because it like just wasn't viable anymore. Like the factory there that like gave them work, like shut down, all that kind of thing. And so we find her starting her like nomadic life of just working like seasonal, minimum wage type jobs and just surviving that way i just i can't even like honestly i didn't know pretty much anything about it going in and it was just so good i was watching it at one point because francis mcdermott is the lead but the rest of the film for the most part is like non-actors it's like actual nomads and the heart that they bring to this film mm, it tore at me the score impeccable and just the overall directing like i absolutely see why chloe zhao is the front runner for best director and i can't wait to watch her win i mean it would have been a great to see her win even if i didn't love the movie this much because i mean one women in the directing category i I think there's maybe been five ever nominated before this year because I believe there's two women nominated this year. And I think maybe one has won. And then you add on a woman of color, an Asian woman, I believe Chloe's Chinese. It's just so, I can't wait to see it. It's gonna be such a good moment for the film industry as a whole. Uh, but yeah, this is literally not me talking about books. So sorry if you don't care about movies. I'm on page 376 of Miss Silver Flames. I don't even remember where I stopped reading last night. Normally, I'm definitely someone that likes to stop, you know, at each chapter. Like, I don't want to just like stop in the middle of the book. But last night, there was a shooting in my city. So like, I got the news of that like while I was reading this and then I just was refreshing social media all night. Hate that my city is once again in national news for gun violence. I basically went to bed at super late, like 5 a.m. because I was staying up. And then by the time I woke up, another shooting, like very similar, happened in Austin, Texas. And I was just like, I don't like it here. Like, Ugh, okay, I'm not gonna get into all that. It's a lot, so. I'm gonna go back to my fairy smut and, um, have have a good time i hope i'm still enjoying this i really don't know what more to say other than i'm enjoying it and i really like the journey that nest is going on so far interestingly enough all right miss sarah y'all i'm having a week and it's only tuesday yesterday i woke up and my eye was just fucked up this one in particular which i think is like my dominant eye i can't tell you what was wrong with it what might still be wrong with it, but it hurt. It was watering a lot and I couldn't focus on things. So needless to say, I got absolutely nothing done. I feel a little better today and I'm hoping it stays that way because I got shit to do this week. First of all, I need to finish <laughs> this book. I was hoping to get through a lot of it last night and then maybe finish it today. Obviously that did not happen. I wanna finish this so that I can read The Crown of Gilded Bones or whatever the fuck it's called. The next book in the From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which you guys know I've read recently and really, really, really loved. I went so far as to literally get my own copy because I didn't want to wait for my library to get it. So clown, the clown is here. But Amazon was like, oh, it won't get there till Thursday. So I was like, okay, I don't know why, but okay. So like, I have time to finish Miss Silver Flames. Then Amazon updated and said it's coming today, which it still hasn't, but regardless. Hmm, plus, I still need to watch two movies before the Oscars on Sunday. And then Friday, obviously, the Shadow and Bone TV show comes out, so I'm already just unhinged completely as a person. I realize that these are such first world problems, but I'm just hoping my eye gets its shit together because like it's like better but i can still feel it kind of like i don't know being like a little strained maybe a bit of like a head ache and also the irony of me like literally just buying new mascara and then being first of all too lazy to put it on before this and then now yesterday and today like i'm not gonna put 
I don't know what this update was for, but basically I'm still reading this. I'm still enjoying it. I'm losing my mind. Like I literally feel. So I don't know why I feel out of it suddenly just recording this clip. Like I was fine a second ago, but I feel like I'm forgetting something. And I also, I hate this vlog. I, I haven't edited it yet, edited it yet, but I hate it. I just know that I hate it. And I, I not Amazon emailing me to say, oh, the delivery's actually not gonna be today, sorry. Only to then email me again in like the same minute. Editor's pick, get the crown of Gilded Bones. I'm trying to! I'm literally sobbing over Nesda Archeron right now. Are you fucking, if you told me, what is, what is this world? What is this world come to? Who am I? I almost didn't read this book just because I fucking hated Nesta. Sarah J. Mass, she can't keep getting away with this. Oh, I hate myself. I hate this. When you go downstairs and your family is like, Hey, you got a little packages. Yeah, I did. And I know what all of them are. So this isn't like gonna be some crazy surprising book haul. Is it chaotic to open them up like this? Cause I don't want to like show my face right now. Heck is number one. It's my pre-order if she drives me crazy, which is one of my new favorite books like ever, but also of this year. If you didn't watch my last video, go watch it because I talk about this and it's amazing and everybody needs to read it. I ordered it from a don't mind my sock. I ordered it from an indie that was doing signed and personalized and it's so gorgeous. Like seriously, y'all need to read this. Like y'all need to read this. Then of course, as expected, we have the crown of gilded bones. Oh, she's so thick and chunky and I'm so excited. Again, I have vlogs where I read the first two books in this series. So if you're interested, check them out. And then because I have a problem, uh, but the tie-in editions of Shadow and Bone is Six of Crows, which are actually a lot prettier in person, I think. And I like the like shiny gloss that's on them. But I have a problem because like, not only do I have these two, but I also have my Illumicrate edition of Rule of Wolves that came in recently. And so like these three <laughs> need to go here. <laughs> Um, Miss Crooked Kingdom, you can't be displayed anymore. We need room, baby. So I'm about to start reading for the night, and I realized I forgot to mention that I got to page 613, chapter 59 of Miss Silver Flames, aka me crying over Nesta last night. What the heck? Also, can we talk about how janky, like, <laughs> my copy is, first of all, the freaking smear on the letters here. I think that's because of my desk. It does it a lot. Um, normally it just puts white on like the black dust, not dust, hardback, but this is, this is a new one. And this, oh my lord, it was like already kind of whack when I got it, so I think shipping might have done something, and then it's so hefty and big that reading it, hello, what is, what that, what is that? Anyway, I'm gonna get to reading, except for the fact that someone... Hello, ma'am? The camera's refusing to focus on you, so I guess you win this round. Hi, Miss Ma'am. Did you know that it's actually not time for your treat yet? Miss Bindi. Miss Bindi. Miss Bindi, yeah. Honey, it's actually not time. So, interesting that you came. Interesting that you're here. When it's not time. Hey friends, so I am here to finally end this vlog because I finished A Court of Silver Flames last night and I gave it five stars. I'm flabbergasted. I remember when she first announced she was writing a book about Nesta. I was like, I don't even think I'll read that. I hate Nesta. And now I love her. Ew, this is weird. This, it's weird. I think Sarah J. Mass placed these pages with drugs because I really enjoyed this. I didn't want it to end because I was just having a good time. I really liked the mental health trauma kind of rap that is in this book. I would say like trigger warnings for mentions of sexual assault and rape and definitely just a lot of like bad mental health spaces like Nesta at the beginning of this book is very much in a bad place and this book is basically her journey to learning to fight for herself and to cope with all of the trauma that she faced in some of the other books of the Akatar series. It was, it was good. The, the smut, the smut. It's been a hot minute since I've read Akamath, but dare I say this was smuttier? And like the different, like there was, 
there was a lot of kinds of smut in this like self-help to uh just all just all the good stuff <laughs> and honestly i feel like again it's been forever since i read the original trilogy but i feel like this book stands up pretty well like I would say it's next to Akamath in terms of how I liked it. So yeah, fucking five stars to Nesta Archeron and Cassian and their relationship is so cute. Like I love them. I found myself even connecting to Nesta's journey in certain ways. And I don't know, it was almost inspiring at some times. Like, oh, uh, God damn it, Sarah J Mass. Just when I think I'm done, just when I think I am no longer the Fae Night Court smutty stan girl from 2016. Here I am once again. My copy is so freaking janky, I hate it. But I don't know when the next book of this comes out. I don't know who it's following. I don't... Are all of the books gonna follow Nesta? Because this wraps up pretty well. If anyone knows who the next book is following, let me know. Or if like we don't know, let me know. I feel like Azriel's definitely gonna get a book. So maybe he's next. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Oh, I really loved the friendships that Nesta makes in this. Like the little girl group and like every, like I've, their whole journey together as well. I was just like, <sighs> yes. So yeah, it was, it was excellent. And I, I, all right, I'm going to end this vlog. I literally don't know what kind of footage I got. I just know it's, I just know it's gonna be a not cute one. So if you made it through, Thanks for watching. I'm just, just very scattered and unhinged right now because the Shadow and Bone TV show comes out tomorrow and I, honestly, I think my video talking about the show will be up before this at this point. Um, okay, yeah, that's it. All right, thanks for watching, bye. <laughs>